Hello, my quilting friends. My name is Leah Day, and welcome to this Frame Quilting Friday. I have a new long arm, as you can see. This is the Grace Cunique 21. It is a massive long arm. This is the biggest long arm that Grace Company offers, and I cannot wait to try it out. So this video is really gonna be a walkthrough, uh, a tension test. This is the first stitch out I have done on this machine at all. So I'm going to walk you through all the steps that I take to not only getting the tension right, but getting to know the machine and making sure it's running properly. And this is really what I think is the key to getting started with a long arm. Whenever you get it, it can be a little intimidating and it can be really tempting to just leave it in the box. And I'm going to encourage you not to do that. Get it out of the box, get it set up, get it on your frame because you really want to run it through its paces from the very beginning. Any issues like mechanical malfunctions that happen with the machine usually happen within the first six months. So you really wanna get it out, get it working from the very beginning. So if there's an issue or any kind of, you know, something crops up, then we can take care of it and make sure that you have a working machine and it's gonna be a great fit for you. And on that note, the very, very first thing I should say, if you're buying a long arm, you always want to save the box. So whenever you think about investing in a machine like this, make sure you also have space to save a box that's obviously bigger than the long arm. Because if anything ever happens to your machine, that's how you're gonna return it to the company in order to get it serviced or in order to get it replaced. Grace Company will issue a call tag, your machine will be picked up, by UPS and then a new machine will be delivered or it will be returned to you all in the same box that it came in. So save the box and save all the packing material. That's all the styrofoam that comes in the box too. Just tape it up and maybe put it in your attic or you know, kind of tuck it in an out of the way place where the box will not get wet and that's perfectly fine. So just make sure never get rid of the box and don't damage the box either. When we were hauling this in here, dad was about to cut out like a handle in the box so he could grab a hold of it and help me pull it in. I was like, don't damage the box, dad. <laughs> so that's one of those things. Okay, so we have this new machine set up here on the Continuum Quilting Frame. And this is the only frame that this machine can go with because it's the only one big enough. And as you can see, I've expanded the frame this way. Like I've said several times in other videos, the Continuum Frame is one that can grow with you. I can expand it this way. And so now I have 17 and a half inches from the needle to the back of the machine. That's how much quiltable space I have to work in. And I love that. I can do huge blocks and all kinds of different things. Okay, but the very first step, this is absolutely key. Get it out of the box, get it set up and start quilting. But don't start quilting on a real quilt. Here I have a single yard of gray fabric. I already have a yard of backing fabric that's been pinned to my leader cloth. And this is the key. I'm not gonna get started with a real quilt because I have no idea straight out of the box if the tension is gonna be solid with the thread that I'm using. I have no idea if I'm gonna have tension issues or thread breaks or any number of things. So I wanna get a plain piece of fabric here on the frame to test it out. So I'm just gonna line this up and push the machine back. And my channel locks are unfortunately a million miles away. So whenever I want to use them, I'm now gonna to have to walk around the back of the frame, which is a little bit less convenient, but honestly, it's not a deal breaker. And the channel locks I'm using are the one on the side of the frame, and that stops the machine from moving forward and back, so that way I can quilt a straight line across. All right, here we go. I'm just gonna click the machine on and start the stitch. So far, so good. All I'm doing is stitching the batting to the quilt top with a nice straight line across. And I'm just stitching slowly and carefully. I don't want to strip out my stitch regulator. When it beeps at you, that means that you're going too fast. And it's a very, very different foot. It also is a very different feel. I have so much more space between me and the long arm now that this is gonna take a little bit of getting used to, definitely. There we go. 
stitch to the end. And then now I will position my piece of fabric, my quilt top. <laughs> quilt top in quotations today. And I'm just gonna line this up so that it is overlapping that line nice and straight across. There we go. And I just generally smooth that out. Again, you don't have to be too picky. That's kind of the point of using a plain yard of fabric is you don't have to be too picky with it. You know, you don't have to be uh, obsessive. It doesn't have to be perfect. The idea is just to get it on and start adjusting, making sure tension is looking good, checking for a thread break, all that kind of good stuff. So far it's looking good, but I can already tell the thread is kind of pulling up on this corner. So on both corners, I might definitely can say I'm going to need my uh, clamps here that are attached to the sides. It looks like that's gonna be a lot more necessary now that I have a bigger machine. And I probably do have a little bit of a pull. I can kind of see a little bit of a pull on the tension to the back. And how I can tell is that the stitches are not looking as nicely delineated. That top thread just looks like it's under almost too much tension. All right, so there we go. Now I'll walk around the back and unlock my channel locks. So now I can kind of fluff up this fabric, just give it a nice smooth out. Because I have so much space here now, I need to be careful to smooth that out nicely so it's flat. And then I'll grab my quilt clips. This is an awesome accessory and you can find these now at leahday.com slash clip. We've added them to the store so that way you can add them to your frame. And this is something that's really, you only need it for the continuum frame. You won't need it for the Q zone frame because that comes with its own kind of clamps. Okay, so I am unlocked and ready to go. And basically what I wanna do is I wanna stitch down to where I can really see the stitches and do some play here right on the edge. And that way I can flip back and be able to see what I'm doing. I can be able to see the stitches from both sides. And then if I'm getting those little dots of tension issues to one side or the other, I'll be able to easily see it. So here we go. And also listening, you know, obviously this is a new machine, a new frame. Sorry, just a new machine, not a new frame, but it's a new machine to me. And I'm listening and learning the sounds of it. And this is really important, you know, when you first get started, you don't know how a machine's gonna sound whenever it's feeling good whenever it's being healthy. And it's kind of one of the biggest keys is learning that, of knowing whenever it sounds a little dry and needs to be oiled, knowing whenever it sounds, you know, uh, like there might be some thread stuck in the bottom, something like that. So far, this is feeling really good. I'm gonna click it off here and take a look at my stitches. Now I can see little brown dots poking up between those stitches. And what that means, that's brown is on the bobbin. Like I said, I have two different colors of isochord thread in the top and bottom. So I have brown in the bottom and I've got white in the top. So if the brown is pulling to the top, what that means is the top tension is too high. So I'm gonna take this and back it off a bit. And that's loosening the tension dial down by like a half number. I think that's a good place to start. And click the machine on. This time I'm gonna stitch straight lines. Straight lines are really good for checking tension because, you know, if it's going to pull to one direction or another, sometimes it's more extreme when it's a curve. When you stitch a roughly straight line, it's less extreme and then you don't run the risk of over, um, kind of over adjusting. So I'm looking at these stitches and this is looking better and it's still not perfect. So I'm gonna click the machine off and loosen it up just a little bit more. There we go. I'm also double checking. You know, this is just something that I know from uh, having experience with my last, I mean, with my 14 plus, and that is that if the tension is too high, sometimes the thread will actually get squished out between the tension discs, so it's not even under tension properly. So I'm double checking that to make sure that it's under tension properly. There we go. Let's do a needle up and needle down. Oops, I hit the wrong button. All right, there we go, I'll do a needle up. 
needle down a few times. Let's try that. See if that made an improvement. And here's the thing. I'm not gonna be super, super persnickety about my tension. I'm not going to go after absolutely no single dot showing on either side because there is kind of a point of obsessive compulsive that it kind of goes just a little bit too far. You have to reach a point where it's like, okay, that looks good. And then if the color, the thread color is the same in the top and bottom, which is what I always, I always use the same thread color in the top and in the bobbin of my machine, then those little dots, that little sign of a tiny, tiny tension issue goes away. You can't see it one bit. All right, it's still not making me as happy as it could. And I wanna say there is something going on with this tension dial. And I, I think it's a different style of dial that, um, yeah, it looks, it looks very different from uh, the one I had before. And I'm going to go on ahead and loosen this all the way. Sometimes I feel like fiddling and fiddling and fiddling with something, you know, and kind of just, you know, not kind of going whole hog. I oftentimes will loosen the tension completely on the top and then slowly dial it back down. And that ensures that I'm not trying to be excessive on my tension. The spring is also feeling just a little bit loose to me. And another thing to check in on, you know, always, and this is something I did right as, as soon as we put the machine on the frame, and that was I double checked my needle. I double checked that it was in the correct location, meaning inserted all the way into the top of the needle bar and that the needle was facing the correct way. You know, you never know, some confused person might have put the machine together at the very last minute and turned the needle around the wrong way. And that might have resulted in an issue with your machine. So always double check these things and never assume that something is set up properly for you straight out of the box. So, you know, it's one of those things to always double check everything yourself. And in this case, I'm loosening my tension all the way to kind of reset it here. So that way we're starting from ground zero. All right, so there we go. This is loosened up all the way. I'm gonna click the machine on and do a couple more lines. Now I know, now I'm not seeing any kind of brown dot, but I'm also seeing some loops here on the top that are implying that it's not catching the bobbin thread or at least it's not, uh, it's not catching solidly. And I'm also taking a look at my tension dial and now my thread is nicely seated. It's nicely going in between those discs. It's not pulling out, but whenever I run my hand, a lot of times I check tension just by running my hand on the back of the quilt and I can feel the tension issue. I can feel loops. I can feel looseness. So that means I obviously can't leave my tension at zero. I need to crank it up just a little bit. So I'm gonna take this up to one and we're gonna slowly increase from there. So this is just one of those things. Yes, your machine will come tension as in factory tension, okay? But that's you know going to change depending on the needle you're using and the thread you're using. So I really want you to understand that straight out of the box, doing this test, using a whole yard of fabric, playing with it, going back and forth, doing some wiggles and stuff, all of this whole nine yards, this is what's required in order to get good stitches, good looking stitches on your long arm. All right, so I'm feeling the stitches. What am I feeling for? Whenever there's a tension issue, I feel noticeable lumps and bumps. Um, whenever there's a tension issue, I can feel a tightness in the thread, whether it's the bobbin thread that's pulling tight to the quilt or the top thread, I can usually see it, but I can also feel it. The thread feels uh, like it's held taut. Like up here, I could tell that there was something going on because it was pulling in on the sides and I could even, you know, I could see it and I can feel it. The thread just feels too tight. Now, this is a very nuancy thing. It takes practice and, you know, you know, kind of time quilting in order to be able to see that kind of thing. I don't expect you to be able to do that straight out of the box, but just feeling this, I can tell that we are much better in tension than we were to start with. 
And just to let you know, I went from having my tension kind of set at the middle place, which was about two and a half, there's lines and numbers on this tension dial. I'm now at one. And I think this is gonna be about where I'm happy with my thread. Uh, so understand that this is the process. It's not gonna come straight out of the box perfectly tensioned. You're gonna need to do this yourself. You're gonna need to play and give yourself permission to stitch, to experiment, to move that tension dial. And this is another thing about long arms in general. I'm gonna need to adjust this possibly every day. Uh, you know, get in, get started, check in on my tension. I always, when I'm on a real quilt, I'll have extra space on both sides so that way I can check in on my tension using scrap fabric on the sides. Uh, and I also uh, will check in anytime I change my bobbin. Uh, and anytime I change the needle, all of those things can have an effect on tension. Uh, a bobbin that doesn't spin as smoothly as one before is going to affect that tension. It's going to make that bobbin have greater tension than the one before, which means you'll have to adjust the top. I very, very rarely mess with my bobbin tension and I've shared lots of different videos on uh, tension tests and stuff like that using your bobbin. I very rarely touch that, pretty much set it, forget it, don't touch it again. It's the top tension that I spend the most time fiddling with until I get absolutely perfect stitches. So I'm pretty happy with this. Let me grab my other camera and then we'll shoot some more and you can see some close-ups of how this Grace Kunique 21 is quilting. So I took a little bit more time to check in on my stitches and then now I'm trying some loopy line. And this is a great design choice because it's going to show you if you have any sort of tension issue in curves. This is a super, super curvy design. So I think straight lines are a good place to start. Gentle curves, great couple of things to start with whenever you're just testing on a machine and then go into a design like this. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for those little dots. Now I got a few over here. I had just oiled the machine though. Uh, so might've had something to do with that. And then now I'm looking here, I'm not seeing any. Now I did have to adjust my handlebars up just a bit. And that's, yeah, it's not the most comfortable, but I mostly am adjusting them up this high in order to be able to film and uh, get a good shot of the needle. So please understand that these are fully adjustable handlebars. So I'm gonna play around with changing up where the location is of this right handlebar because I'm left-handed, I can play around with this. I usually just steer with my right hand anyway, sorry, my left hand anyway. Uh, and so you can just lift up on these and then clamp them down wherever you want them to go. And that might give you a little bit more control. And that's a special feature of the 21. The, um, the 15R or 14 plus doesn't have adjustable handlebars. So I think that's really cool. All right, this is looking really good. That's a really interesting feel with the handlebar kind of here on the side. I actually really like that. I'm gonna try steering just with that hand. It's not in my vision, although it is kind of coming to the front there a little bit, but I really like the feel of it because it's at this angle. I don't know why, but I think it's good to definitely test that out and just see where it feels the most comfortable. You can see I'm just repeating that same loopy shape. And I'm gonna check in real quick here. Oh, wrong button, there we go. I'm getting just a little bit of dots pulling up in certain loops, but not all of them. I'm gonna just lighten up just a bit on my tension again and see if that takes care of it. Let's do some straight lines, sharp angles. Another place that you might see thread pulling is in straight corners, like 90 degree corners or sharp angles like these. If you notice a little pull, yeah, I'm getting a little bit of a pull right in those points. Let's take a look. So the thread is ever so slightly pulling up in those points. This is extremely subtle. It's not a huge tension issue, but it's making me want to check in on my bobbin case. So let's do that next. So here is the bobbin case that came with this machine. And this is just, a little bit loose tension, in my opinion. Uh, I'm pulling on the thread and I usually like to be able to pick up the bobbin case and have it kind of slowly run down. 
this is, you know, I grab the thread and it basically just drops the second I let go of it. That's striking me as just a little bit loose, which would explain if this is running a little loose and I'm pulling up uh, thread to the top, then tightening this up will help with that. So let me grab a screwdriver and give this a little tighten. So this is the screw that I want to adjust whenever I am increasing the tension. I'm going to take this and turn clockwise or uh, to the right, righty tighty. And then if I was to loosen it, I would be going to the left. All right, so there we go. That was a full turn. And let me come over here and do that little yo-yo test again. So this is almost a little bit too tight. You can see how I'm, I'm jiggling it up and down and it's really not moving much. That's almost a little bit too tight. So I've, I've gone a little bit too far. Now, when you do that yo-yo test and you jiggle your bobbin like that, make sure that your hand and your quilt and everything else, you've got a pillow or something underneath so that this doesn't just crash to the floor, especially a concrete floor. You don't wanna drop your bobbin case ever. This is made out of metal. It can bend, it can get dinged up and it really won't work as well if that happens. So make sure to treat this very, very carefully and do this test very carefully if you are adjusting your bobbin tension. Uh, always keep your hand right underneath it. And as you can see, I also do that right above my quilt as well. Okay, let me adjust this one more time. So it's that nice big screw right there and I'm going to back it off by a quarter turn here. There we go, that looks good. Yep. And then I'll try that bobbin test again. And then that is exactly what I want. Let me show you again. I'm gonna start up here, okay? I move my hand and it's just a slow slide straight down. So if I, I have my hand here, I hold on to the thread, I move my hand and it's a slow slide down. That's exactly what I'm looking for. And that's the exact same thing I'm looking for whenever I'm checking tension on my home machines too. Uh, that's exactly the tension that I like on all of my bobbin cases. Okay, so I'm gonna pop this back into the machine. We'll give it another test. Okay, so because I made that adjustment, I am most likely going to have to do something with my top thread. Uh, so I'm gonna keep an eye out for that. Right now I'm starting with just a gentle wiggly line. You know, you can pretty much test however you want, you know, in whatever order. If you wanna go back to straight lines and sharp angles, you can. And then now I'll go back to those jagged lines, back and forth. And I'm getting the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest pull. But you know what, honestly, I'm not going to continue trying to beat my head against a wall with that kind of stuff because that would be totally sorted out if I was using the same color thread in the top and bottom. So there comes a time where you just decide, okay, that's good enough, you know, and don't keep trying to beat it to death. Uh, you know, we can be really persnickety with this. We could drive our cra ourselves crazy with it. Um, and there is definitely a point where I say, okay, enough is enough. That's good tension overall. Now I'm going to go back into the loops. This is looking great. I am super, super happy with it. I'm also getting used to the feel of the machine. As I said, I'm playing with these handlebars just to see how it feels to have those in different positions. And I'm definitely going to get, keep on playing with that uh, just to see what it feels like when I have both handlebars down here in the front. I kind of like that idea. And as you can see, super amount of space to quilt in. I mean, that's honestly, I'm kind of struggling to get used to that because I'm used to having, you know, a limited amount of space to work in. And now I can go all the way back here and then all the way to the front. And it, it just, it almost feels just a little bit weird to have this much space and to have my arms stretched out this far into the frame, but it's cool. I mean, it's awesome in a, you know, it feels, it feels a little different, but it feels awesome at the same time. Okay, uh, so as you guys know, I've always had a little bit of trouble travel stitching on my long arms. So let's see if this is improved at all. Eh, a little bit. I, I, I seem to be able to, to travel stitch for about a half of an inch to an inch, and then I wiggle off a little bit. 
but you know this is a skill that gets built the more I quilt, the more I travel stitch, the more I stitch designs like feathers where I have to hit a point exactly, like here I need to hit that point exactly and then I need to travel stitch along the back of that feather. The more I quilt designs like this and stop worrying about it being imperfect like that, you know, the more I stitch it, the better I'm gonna get, the more skill I'm gonna have, and then the easier that's going to be to quilt freehand, meaning no rulers, no marks, no nothing. In the meantime, until that does improve, which as you can see, I still need a lot more practice, uh, I can just basically focus on designs that, you know, hit points help me build that skill, but can still be pretty, such as echo feathers or space feathers. It's basically the same design, just putting a little bit of space between those feathers so there's less travel stitching involved. But as you can see, that is one pretty demented feather. Not the prettiest, but that's the point of a practice sandwich. Make a big mess. It can be as ugly as you want, and then this can become a cat or dog bed. You know, no one's going to uh, criticize your stitches. If it's meant for a pet, that's A-OK. -okay. And I find, you know, with something like that, all I have to do is just kind of turn the edges over and zigzag, and that's as much binding as it needs in order to be secured. But really, I think overall, this is gonna be such a fast, easy machine to use. It has a great feel to it. And I cannot wait to quilt my first quilt on the 21. So that's it for this video. I hope that this tutorial has helped you kind of get the uh, gumption, <laughs> the confidence to pull your long arm out of the box, get it set up, and I've given you some ideas for the first starting practice sandwich because this is the absolute most important thing to get started with. You need to check in on your tension. You need to make sure your needle's in the right position. You need to check your foot height. That's another important thing that you know, can definitely affect your stitches. You need to check in on that bobbin case tension and see how that is going. So definitely run through all the steps. Double check your threading, of course, and always refer to your manual to know how to thread the machine initially because, of course, when you're first getting started with something, you haven't memorized the thread path. So take your time getting to know your machine and getting to know how it feels, how it sounds, where you want the handlebars, all that good stuff. And then, of course, don't leave it in the box. I have heard from so many quilters over the last year that have said that they've bought a long arm and then gotten intimidated by it and left it in the box, not for one year, but multiple years in a row. So please don't do that. If you're gonna invest in a long arm, have the gumption to pull it out of the box, get it on your frame and start playing with it. Now, if you'd like to learn more about the Grace 21, this giant long arm and the continuum frame that it is compatible with, come and check it out at leahday.com 21. It is an excellent system. If you are serious about quilting, if you want the maximum amount of space to quilt in, and you really wanna knock out your quilts quickly. Now, of course, we have other machines that are smaller, that are cheaper. We have a different frame that only takes up four and a half feet. So understand that there is a wide variety of different setups that you can do when it comes to your long arm. So learn more, educate yourself, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask at leahday.com contact. Now you can find a lot more videos on long arm quilting and my Frame Quilting Friday series. So check out all of them at leahday.com frame. Until next time, let's go quilt.